A warm greeting. Today is Friday, October 10, 2025. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia speaking. In today's video, I'll be giving an update on Tropical Storm Jerry, which is currently at its closest point to the Caribbean and continues moving northward. Therefore, it will be moving away from the region throughout the weekend. But before giving details about Tropical Storm Jerry, I wanted to mention that far to the north in the Atlantic, to the northwest of the Azores Islands, subtropical storm Karen formed yesterday. It remains quite weak and is expected to be short-lived. In fact, it's anticipated to dissipate by tomorrow. Now, although subtropical storm Karen has not and will not pose any threat to land areas, its formation point has been quite a peculiar event because, according to historical data, subtropical storm Karen formed at the highest latitude on record since 1851. In recent years, We've seen more tropical or subtropical cyclones forming far to the north in the Atlantic, and it's likely that this is due to the warm temperature anomalies observed this year in the north and subtropical Atlantic. Now, returning to the eastern Caribbean region, we have Tropical Storm Jerry, which remains highly disorganized. The circulation center is currently located just northeast of the Antilles, but the area of heavy rain is situated toward the southeast and south of the circulation. This means that the storm continues to be affected by wind shear from the northwest, which has not only prevented it from strengthening but has also caused it to weaken. It currently has maximum sustained winds of 50 miles per hour. Because of this, it is no longer forecast to strengthen into a hurricane. However, the asymmetric structure of this cyclone led to heavy showers and rainfall across most of the Lesser Antilles overnight and into this morning, possibly resulting in some localized flooding. Fortunately, the system will continue moving northward and will not affect the Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, or the Dominican Republic. Regarding tropical storm force winds, notice that the strongest winds have remained over the Atlantic waters, affecting mainly the islands of Antigua and Barbuda. Also, as forecast, tropical storm Jerry made that turn toward the northwest and north, and as you can see in the specialized track models, it should continue moving northward over the open Atlantic, staying to the southeast and east of Bermuda without posing a threat of direct impact. As mentioned, due to the persistent wind shear, models now maintain it as a weak to moderate tropical storm over the next five days and only one model strengthens it into a hurricane. However, that particular model has so far been incorrect in predicting significant strengthening of Tropical Storm Jerry. This morning, some tropical storm force gusts, between 35 and 40 miles per hour, may still affect parts of the northeastern Lesser Antilles, though no major issues are expected, and the worst part appears to be over. Still, keep in mind that locally heavy showers are expected today and through Sunday, with rainfall totals between 2 and 4 inches from Dominica through the Virgin Islands. So the weekend will likely remain rainy across the northern half of the Lesser Antilles. Now, I wanted to take a few minutes to talk about the areas we'll be monitoring over the next few weeks. First, note that we remain in a favorable phase of the Madden-Julian Oscillation, MJO, which promotes instability over the Atlantic and the African continent. This phase is associated with tropical cyclone formation in the North Atlantic region. What does this mean? Essentially, we anticipate that the next two weeks will continue to be favorable for the development of additional cyclones. This is considering that sea surface temperatures remain warmer than normal across the tropical Atlantic, Caribbean Sea, and Gulf of Mexico, conditions that can support further tropical development, particularly in the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean. In this chart, you can see that the main development region currently ranks third warmest on average since 1991. We see similar temperature anomalies in the Caribbean Sea and the Gulf of Mexico. In response, some long-range models show several areas to watch. First, the Western Caribbean where some low pressures could develop and perhaps have some chances for formation. However, for now, probabilities remain low. On the other hand, we'll also be monitoring two tropical waves crossing the tropical Atlantic. The first one is emerging from Africa and could encounter marginally favorable conditions as it moves westward, though projections indicate it may gain latitude quickly and not pose a threat to land. Following that wave, another is expected to emerge at a much lower latitude and may travel farther west. Long-range models suggest that conditions could become marginally favorable for tropical development just east of the Lesser Antilles. However, it's important to note that none of these areas have yet been highlighted by the National Hurricane Center, though it's possible they will be in the coming days. So, as always, here at Hurricane Info, I'll continue monitoring the tropics to keep you informed. If you don't want to miss this content, I invite you to give this video a like, and don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel and click the bell to receive notifications when I post new updates. I hope you all have an excellent weekend. See you next time.